<laughs> I can get used to this. My goodness. today going to Anchorage Alaska and then driving down to Homer it's gonna be a long day So, here at the Grand Junction Airport. And just got through check-in, security check-in, all went good. Flying to Salt Lake today, and then I'm flying to Seattle today. Flying to Anchorage today, and then I'm driving down to Homer, Alaska. That's the destination today. Going to see our girl Kayla, who is the absolute best. First flight, 6 a.m., boards in about five minutes. I haven't had coffee yet. There you go. Thank you. Okay. First flight down two more to go first one took about an hour second was gonna take about two hours and then the third one from Seattle to Anchorage will take about three hours and then we got a four-hour drive to Homer so doing great so far can't survive without this Made it to Alaska. 12 hour flights. Still have another four hours to go drive down to Homer. It is currently 16 or 17 degrees in Anchorage. I am tired, but I'm so excited because we're going to meet up with Kayla's parents down at Baggage Claim, drive down to Homer, and I hear it's one of the prettiest drives in all the US. So let's go. I could get used to this. My goodness. Wow, probably one of the, the prettiest morning sets I've ever had. I mean, like you literally, I wake up right there in this amazing guest house that Kayla's parents actually built. And then you go to that. Less than 10 feet away. Absolutely spoiled. I'm gonna enjoy this week while I'm here. Uh, today, Kayla's gonna show me around Homer. One of the things that I noticed about Homer right away is despite how small it is, how spread out it is. It's about 20 miles long. It's got about 8,000 people in it. It has the spit, it has the harbor down in that area, and it's got a bunch of local places that, from what I hear, serve some of the best food along the whole entire Kenai Peninsula. So I'm so excited to try that today. Simply gonna be a tourist and exploring it. And then later on this week and weekend, we're gonna go exploring outside stuff, cross country skiing, snowshoeing, whatever else we decide to do. So let's go see Homer. So we're going to 
the Homer Spit, which is a pretty popular tourist location. The Spit is just a protrusion of land on into the water, into the Pacific Ocean. And this, this bay of water is called Kachmak Bay. In 1964, there was a massive earthquake in Alaska, and there was a huge tsunami that came and wiped out like all of the spit, and so they had to build it back up. There was one building that stayed put during that. It's called the Salty Dog Saloon. So it's like a it's like a tourist destination. Honestly, I don't know if I've ever been inside of it. So from what you saw, something like the sign coming in, Homer is the Halbit capital of the world. From what the locals say, the best places to eat are always down on the spit, at least during the summertime. What I didn't tell you is your, your rite of passage to Alaska is to go swimming in the ocean. Do it, what, the polar plunge? <laughs> We're, we'll do it one night. Me and my friends just did it like a week ago. You did? Yeah. Jump in that water. Yeah. It's 20 degrees on land right now. We had a fire and we jumped in and then we went to the fire. So we'll do that. The wind is blowing so hard right now on the beach. So it makes it about maybe like a 15 to 20 degree wind chill. But you can't argue with any of this right now. I mean, how often does the beach Meet the mountains. Whew. Okay, I don't even know how many days it's been since I did one of the little recap sessions, but to basically recap, we've went to a glacier and that was an adventure within its own. We ended up hiking up after going across on a boat with our cross country skis, hiked up to this portion of island across the bay to where we would simply hike up with our boots and then ski down and then ski across a frozen lake to one of the largest glacier systems in the entire Northern Hemisphere. And it was one of the most utterworldly experiences you will ever have. I mean, it was clear skies, but the glacier was so blue and so big, you could stand next to one of these things and it would be 50 times your size height-wise. Even according to the locals, is a rather once in a lifetime experience. Not many people down here, even in the Homer or the peninsula of Kenai, go across the Ketchupak Bay and go across to hike. Uh, the fundamentals of global warming, as you can see, the sun hits. Look at those drips. Each drip represents six years. <laughs> six years, six years, six years, six years. Earth's warming. That's all we can do. We've gone fishing on Saturday, which ended up getting nothing. But today, we ended up fishing and it was a much better situation. Point Adams, about 45 miles from the spit in Homer, and we're looking for some king salmon. So we're trolling here, Let's see if we can find any. No one's probably fished here for a couple weeks, so the fish are all built up here. It's just thicker in cement. <laughs> so we're gonna be catching lots. So we're out here. It's 20 degrees outside. Yeah. Maybe like 10 a.m. <laughs> Could have come out here at 8, but. To the lower 48 landlocked people, why would anybody want to go fishing in the middle of like these winter times? We that's, want to get some place. fresh salmon. Winter kings are the best because they have lots of fat on them, so they taste really good. Fat and oil, right dad? Yeah. They're the best. And there's nothing quite like reeling up a big old king on a rod. What happens when you see the line pull and you see a fish. What's the what's the routine like? Everybody gets excited. Everybody starts yelling. Whoever can get there first goes there and rips the pull out of the holder. Starts reeling in the king. The cool thing about this place is that it's basically just like surrounded 
I guess what some would call the Pacific Ring of Fire, which you can't even see because of this lens, but there's volcanoes in the background, just along the skyline, that reach that one right there. Probably about 10,000, 12,000 feet of elevation. We are currently well at, of course, sea level, so you can imagine some pretty tall rock. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. One of those volcanoes went off and pretty much everything in Homer shut down. It was raining ash. There was a few inches of ash on the ground in Homer. Couldn't go outside or do anything just because it wasn't safe. It was like snow. You could collect it. There's a few inches on your cars and stuff. So that was fun. <laughs> that was in 2009? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the status report? Still no fish. Nope, salmon too, greenling. They're just not biting today. Oh, that looks like a king killer. That does. <laughs> Here. Oh, that's the one attacking the bad cat! Woohoo! Don't lose that! Hold on, Tom. Hold on there. Hey, don't take me because I'm not staying ready. Hold on. That's a king. That's what we're talking about. See that pull back? Oh my goodness! Woo! Woo! Holy cow! Look at the size of that thing! <laughs> I think there's one on this side! We caught a king and Kayla's on the line right now. She had to put the camera down <laughs> because she got one of her own. There's this one. Here's Kayla ringing one in. Is it, a, is it a king? I think it's a halibut. Halibut? I want to see this fish! Oh yeah! Oh, oh, oh my yeah. gosh! Woo we got a dandy! All right, we got a dandy. Here, Dad. Back up, back up. So after the fishing trip came in, we filleted, we ate it, and it was so good! Oh man, if I could catch my own fish and eat it in the same day every single day of my life, I would not be upset with that. <laughs> but we're excited, so <laughs> I don't know how to vlog at 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Let's go to the airport.